Okay, today we're going to be looking at this mouse. It is the Cherry MC4000. The mouse has an up to 2000 dpi, but it is switchable between 1000 and 2000 dpi. The colour of the mouse or the illuminations of the mouse does change between blue and red depending on the dpi setting you have it on. Uh, 1000 dpi is blue, 2000 is red. So, unfortunately, if you want red uh, lights on there, uh, you have to have it on the high DPI. If you have blue, tough luck, you can only have it on a thousand. The recommended retail price of this item is 25 UK pounds. You will find links in the description to this item. It also has a high speed motion detection of 60 frames per second. Let's have a quick look at the box. On the front, it looks pretty straightforward and standard. You've got a picture of the mouse with the blue illumination on there. Good thing about Cherry products is usually the product is the size of the actual image on the front of the box. But unfortunately with Cherry products it doesn't actually say what it is on the front of the box. Again, a lot of these things are aimed at businesses rather than the home user and so forth. But uh, again, there's not many businesses which would want gaming style stuff. So I'd like to see somewhere across the top corner just the name or something like that. So it's easier to see and know what it is if you have it on the shelf. The rest of the box, you've got a barcode on the side, another picture of the mouse. At the top just says cherry. The other side shows you a side view of the mouse, so that's pretty good. Again, you can see that blue illumination there. At the bottom, you gain you you've got your badges on the bottom, so nothing special. And then on the back, you've got your specifications. Okay, inside the box for the Cherry MC4000, you've only got really two items. That is A, the mouse, and then B, the manual. Uh, the manual is pretty straightforward. It says that that's a cabled mouse on the front. I'm guessing there's going to be lots of different languages in there. Yeah, it tells you basically what the buttons are on there. Otherwise, the rest is in all different languages. There's not a huge amount in there. To read there's the English part so each language has got roughly about six pages okay so a closer look at the mouse itself so let's start with the cable the cable itself is not braided it is sort of a rubberized finish on there um, it feels quite hard wearing so there shouldn't be an issue there and the standard USB connection on the end the mouse You've got obviously your left mouse button, your right mouse button, the wheel is a button and obviously a wheel. You've got your DPI button, there is also a left button on the side, or a back button, that we usually use it for, and a forward button on the right. But again, depending on what you're using it on and what games and so forth, you can usually customise those if you are using it for stuff like that. Uh, the bottom is pretty straightforward to look at not much to see there. It seems to have that smooth area around the edge to allow it to glide and then you've got a label on the bottom which basically tells you all the specifications and model numbers. The cable itself is two meters long. Once plugged in you can see the illumination on the top so you've got blue just around the wheel. The DPI button itself lights up and just on the left hand side around where the back button and the same on the right side where the forward button is. The bottom does have a slight blue tint to it where the laser is, but once we press the DPI switch, it changes to red. And again, everything lights up. Red, but that's it. That's all you've got is blue and red. There is no option for any other color. Uh, and the DPI, depending on how you want it, red is at 2000 DPI blue is at 1000. If you're not bothered about the colours, it doesn't really matter, but there's no way of turning the lights off either. One thing to note is the cable, if you've not got it positioned right, does pull the mouse slightly. So you can see here, moving on its own, if there's just a slight bit of uh, tightness on the cable which means the the mouse is doesn't grip very well there it does slide well 
but obviously if you've got that cable it can sort of stop moving on its own so make sure you position your cable just right. Uh, otherwise moving it around is very smooth, very easy to use uh, and I've not had any problems using it. Okay as you can see here the weight of this is pretty much closer than you can only get to 100 grams without being 100, it's at dead on 99. That for me is not a bad weight for a mouse, it's not too heavy, it's not too light. So this fluctuates slightly between 98 and 99 but again that what's one gram. Um, so that's pretty good. Um, we'll have a look how loud it is. So basically this will check how many decibels it is, the room noise level is around about the mid 40s so if I'm quiet for a second you'll see what it is so as you can see there around about 44 so we're going to keep the mouse roughly around about 10-15 centimeters away from the actual sensor and just click the mouse just so you can see how loud it is So as you can see there, it's pretty quiet, it's not loud at all, it's no louder than any other mouse, don't get me wrong, it's not the quietest one in the world, but it's not bad for what it is. And again, this is a pretty good mouse and um, it's got a retail uh, value of £25, so it's pretty good, so you're getting a good brand, decent mouse, it don't ha uh, look bad to be honest with you, you could use it really for entry level gaming, or you could use it uh, in an office or for home use if you wish. Thank <laughs> you.